with everything else, make sure before you do anything, you have an expressed written order by the physician identifying the patient, the medication, the amount, okay, and everything else. If you touch a patient against their will, this constitutes assault and battery with a deadly weapon. Okay, do not do anything without an expressed written order. Right over here, I have my multi-use file, which I'm going to clean the top off and wait for it to dry. Alcohol is going to dry, and from after it does, I'm going to extract the liquid from there. Just give it a syringe. Oh, mine's just done. If you want mine, it's already done. No, no, no. This is fine. I'm going to use a brand new syringe. Remember the rules. When in doubt, throw it out. So I'm taking a brand new syringe. I'm going to move the plunger back and forth to loosen it up a little bit. Okay? Make sure the needle is nice and tight down there. Now I can see the top of the vial is dry. And at this moment in time, I can take my needle, inject a little bit of air inside there, making it easier for us to extract fluid. If you look closely, just because I put a little air in there, the plunger is moving out back all by itself. All right, I'm going to take the amount that I need for this, okay? If you look closely, you see that there's an air pocket over here and a small bubble over there. I'm going to get rid of it by tapping it gently, not too hard, okay? And all my air went up on top, all right? I'm going to get the extra liquid out, and I'm going to stop at 0 0.5 cc's for this injection, which is what I will want you to fill up your syringe with. We do not recap the needle after it's been used, but before it's used, I can put my cap on the side and put the needle inside just like this. All right, so as to make sure not to poke myself with the needle. Now, we're doing an intramuscular injection, and we're going to be doing it in a shoulder muscle called the deltoid, okay? It's called a deltoid because it looks like a Greek letter delta, which is nothing more than a triangle. We're going to try to hit the middle of this particular big muscle right over here. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean my site with alcohol. And notice how big my circle is. I'm going from the inside out, pushing the dirt or whatever else is on the side, you know, from the inside to the outside. And I'm going to let it air dry. The longer the alcohol stays wet, the cleaner the site is. Do not use anything to dry the site of the injection. Let the injection dry by itself. The longer the alcohol is wet, the cleaner the site will be. I'm going to take into my left hand a couple of pieces of gauze and I'm going to put it between my index and my middle finger, middle finger just like so. Okay. I'm going to take my syringe and I'm going to hold it just like a dart with the bevel facing up. Now contrary to popular belief, these injections do not hurt if you do them right. Okay, hold them just like so. And the movement is with your fingers, just like a dart. You don't want to throw the dart from the elbow because what happens is that your elbow makes the needle arch. What you're doing is actually using your fingers to project it out further. Do not stand there and practice like this with the patient. The patient is not to look at what you're doing. People get slightly spooked with the needles. We don't care about that. Now, where do we find the site of the injection? For the site of the injection, we're going to find the bone that sticks out over here in the shoulder. This bone is called the acromion process of the scapula. I'm going to take my pinky, I'm going to put it right on the very end, and I'm going to go one, two, three finger lengths down from the acromion process. And that's going to be my site of the injection. Okay, I want to show you this just a bit. If I'm going to move her arm up, you see the big bulging muscle right over here, which is our deltoid. We're going to be right in the middle of it. Okay, so again, pinky and the acromion, one, two, three, that's the site of the injection. Okay, I know approximately where I am. Now, at this moment in time, I'm going to squeeze her arm just like so. The harder I squeeze, the less pain the patient actually feels. So this is the only thing that they're feeling. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is, you know, using my, um, you know, speed, I'm going to poke her with a needle. Notice she didn't even flinch. The needle's already inside. As I'm going to take my left hand off, I'm going to gently pull back on the plunger. This gives me the ability to see if there's any blood coming into the syringe. There should not be any blood. Then I'm going to pretend to inject very slowly. And remember, this is practice. We don't inject anything. After that, my gauze is already here. I'm going to gently place it over the side of the injection, quickly extract the needle just like so, and massage the area. How was that? Fine. Now I'm going to let the patient hold this. 
and massage it for herself just a tad. And I'm going to dispose of my syringe right away inside the sharps container just like so. This one is already full. I'm just going to close it so it can't be reopened. Now, for this particular injection, we should have a band-aid. Band and I'm going to put the band-aid on uh, for this. I'm going to walk myself over to the back. Do you have a band-aid? No. Did it hurt? Mm -hmm. Not at all. You gotta lie. Because when you squeeze like that, and then you just do it really quick, they don't, you don't feel. If, if you're holding, if they're doing it properly, you're not gonna feel it. Now there's a right way and the wrong way to put on the band-aid, okay? Uh, most people get really tangled up here between gloves and band-aid and glue and so on and so forth. Okay, now there's no reason to do that. All right, now I'm gonna unglue it here or just uncover the area where there's a, the pad without touching the glue. Let go of this, I know where my site is. I'm gonna put this on just like so. All I have to do now is pull the paper this way, stretch it out and pull the paper this way and the Band-Aid is secure on the shoulder. Again, I'm gonna collect up all my stuff from here collect it up into my non-dominant hand, all the garbage. Only sharp things go into the sharps container. Everything else goes into regular trash. Pinch, crumple it over into my other glove, hook it under the cuff, just like so. Just like this, now I have a neat little package that'll go into the garbage can on my way to wash hands. Okay, you can fill that. 